guys, we're going to get started here. Again, it, before you ask your question, if you can introduce yourself um, with your name and affiliation, and then we'll try to do our best to take questions in the order in which you raise your hand um, to, and get through as many as we can. Um, so with that, Casey Johnson, NBC Sports Chicago. Well, Beth, you just introduced me, but I am Casey Johnson from NBC Sports Chicago. Josh, welcome to Chicago. Um, Sam Presti offered a pretty specific detail in his statement announcing the trade, saying that he held some conversations with you about a reserve role that you didn't show much interest in and professionally conveyed your desire to maybe seek opportunities elsewhere. That leads to the obvious follow-up question, which is, in your initial dealings with the Bulls, have you been given any indications or assurances that you'll be the starting point guard next season? Um, yeah, I mean, in regards to Sam's comments, um, I mean, it's you know pretty accurate. We we spoke a lot throughout the off season and um, and even in the, our exit interviews. And, and um, I've had a great relationship with Sam throughout my entire time in Oklahoma. And um, the one thing about him that's that I you know really respect is his transparency. And he's very open and honest with players and. Um, and especially with me throughout this whole process. And obviously I came off a tough year. Um, you know, my role shifted a little bit. Um, I was pl playing a lot more, you know, off ball and kind of in a different role to what I've ever done in my career. So um, there was no secrets that um, it was going to take some kind of flexibility on my part to, um, you know, fit in with the team that we had and the structure that we had and the type of players that we had. So, um, and he spoke about to me about, you know, looking at potentially different roles, coming off the bench, running the second unit, things like that. And, um, and I just said to him, like, at this point in my career, you know, I'm 21 years old. It wasn't something that, you know, I was overly eager to do. And, um, and he, he, he completely understood. And um, just throughout the whole process, we were open and honest with each other. And, um, and I said to him, look, um, you know, coming off the bench at this point in my career, um, it's not something, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do and, 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 you know, take a reserve role. But um, he got it. We worked together through the whole process. And, um, and he, he got me to a great spot. I'm very, very excited to be here um, in Chicago. And um, all first impressions have been unbelievable. The people have been great. And I feel, you know, very welcomed here. So just quickly following up, Josh, did, have the Bulls given you any indications or assurances you'll be the starting point guard next season? Uh, no, I mean, we haven't spoke about roles and things like that as of yet. Um, I've had a lot of, you know, I've met with Billy a bunch of times already. Um, he's been unbelievable in the conversations we have, we've had. But uh, I understand that the team that's here, there's a lot of good guards, um, Io, Kobe, um, Dalen. They've got a lot of guys that can handle the rock. So um, I think it'll make for, you know, the competition that we'll have throughout training camp and things like that to, to push each other, be better. Um, is going to be great, and um, you know we'll see what happens. You know when the season rolls around. Thank you, Joe. Guys, how you doing, Joe Colley from the Chicago Sun Times? I'm good, man. Nice to meet hey, you. Real quick, uh, not not to have you play general manager your first day talking to us, but have there been any indication of you know you're the first piece of of these changes that they've talked about? I mean, obviously they got the draft tomorrow, and so. There could be a piece added there, but did you ask, like, well, is this, like, the personnel or is this is this the group we're working with? Who am I competing against? I mean, obviously, Lonzo Ball is still kind of out there, and we don't know his future. I mean, have you asked those kind of questions, or have you been told, hey, we are changing this thing, stay patient? No, I haven't, I haven't asked. Um, I've just, you know, kind of focused on, you know, getting here, getting acclimated to the new surroundings. Um, but, no, I haven't asked. Um, I understand the drafts in a couple of nights, so – you will get players through that, but in terms of what direction the franchise is going, I've um, I haven't asked any questions. Um, I've just kind of bought into whatever happens here um, happens, and um, I'll try my play play my part in helping our team be as good as we can be um, right from the jump. And then one more thing off of what you said, you talked about it last year. It was it was a tough year for you. I mean, the obvious question is going to be: with all the stuff that happened off the court, did that carry on the court? Did you think that kind of played into it, or was it more of a personnel change? where the Thunder were going and your fit was just different than it had been the previous two years? Yeah, look, I think there's a lot of things that go into an NBA season. There's a lot of distractions, um, whether it's outside noise, um, whether it's internal change. And I think for me, um, a lot of it came internally. A lot of it came more with um, how good our team got and how much we evolved as a group. And uh, my role kind of... I don't want to say it diminished, but it kind of was different to the first two years I had. So right. it was a big adjustment for me learning to play off the ball. Obviously, got guarded a lot differently just with the lineup that we had. And um, obviously, you know, with guys like Chet coming in, um, it forced their centers to make adjustments. So um, a lot of it was, you know, basketball related. Um, for me, at least, that's, that's the way I felt. 
Um, but as I said, it was more credit to our team than anything. We just got good quickly, and um, you know, um, those kind of things happen. And um, you know, I, my role changed a little bit, and it was just a year of adjusting and, and learning different things. Thanks, bro. Mike. Hey Josh, Mike McGraw from the Daily Herald. Um, you, we've all we've all kind of known you as a guy who who fills up the box score, gets a lot of does a lot of different things. What do you think you can best you can do to best help a team uh, an NBA team win? Yeah, I think um, that the player I am, my my job is just to make the game easy for everybody else. Um, that's kind of what I want to do and come in and, and make sure you know guys get an easy looks, guys feel confident on the floor. I feel. When you, as a, as a point guard, when you can get other people around you going and making them um, involved in the game, getting them feeling good early, um, it opens the game up for everybody. So um, that's kind of how I see myself, just making um, basketball and the game simple for everybody else and making it easy for my teammates around me. Cody? Hey, Josh. Uh, Cody Westrom on 670, the score of sports radio. You'll be uh, contract extension eligible before the regular season starts. How are you viewing that? Is it a priority to get an extension before the new season starts, or are you leaning toward handling that business in summer 2025? Yeah, I mean, obviously, coming off my season in Oklahoma, um, that was kind of the thought process. It was, it was all extension, extension. And then um, when a trade happens, that kind of flips my mindset to a different thing. So uh, in regards to the extension, I haven't thought about it a lot over the last you know, week for you know, however long it's been, a uh, week or so. Um, but I'm sure that those conversations will happen with my agent, the, the front office here, and um, and those sorts of things. So, um, but you know, it's it's not the be all end all for me. Uh, if it happens, it happens. If not, um, e either way is fine. But um, as I said, those conversations will happen, and I'll let them play out as they do. Julia, Josh, Julia, Post, Chicago Tribune, welcome to Chicago. Um, you mentioned that last year was a bit of an adjustment year for yourself. What do you feel like you learned about yourself as a player and kind of what were your main priorities in terms of growth for this offseason? Yeah, um, in terms of, you know, how I saw my season, uh, I mean, it was different, you know. Um, I, it was a lot of off-ball stuff. It was um, screening. It was playing in the dunker, um, being ready to catch a shoot. So there was a lot of different things. And um, and as I said earlier, I think it wasn't a – it wasn't um, – a negative look on me it was more so our team got so good and there was multiple players that could handle the ball and do different things so um i had to adjust i had to learn different things and i think it did and, and while you're in the midst of it it's hard to see the light but um looking back at it now it probably taught me a lot of lessons that i needed um for a young player in their career and how to adapt to different environments and um i thought as i said when you're going through it during the season it, it feels like it's such a struggle and a grind but um when you reflect on it you know weeks and months after the season's done there's a lot of good things to take away from it. And um, as I said, I'm very grateful for my time there. Um, I met a lot of great people, uh, learned a lot of valuable lessons um, on the floor, and um, I think some of them are definitely going to translate um, to this team. Darnell? Thanks, Beth. What's up, Josh? Uh, Darnell Mayberry with The Athletic and Money Talks. Um, I have two questions for you, actually. One about you and one about OKC and, and the Thunder. Uh, the first is about you and, and your game. When Prince released that statement, he had high praise saying that you know you had all-star potential. What do you feel like you need to do to, to tap into that and get to that level? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously I thank Sam for those comments. He's a, um, as I, said, I speak very highly of him, a uh, great person. Um, but in, in regards to that, I think um, it, it just it was going to be hard to – to tap into my full potential, in my opinion, in, in a team like that where there was just so many talented guys who needed the ball in their hands, who were great with the ball in their hands. And um, and a change of scenery was probably going to maybe unlock more of that for me. Um, but I think, as I said, just um, being able to make the game easy for everybody, being able to get guys involved, distribute the ball, um, and get other players confident around me is, is kind of the thing I pride myself on doing. Um and, you know, it's, it's hard to do that in a role where you're, the ball's not in your hands a lot and you're, you're screening, you're doing different things. So, um, you know, for me, as I said, that's probably the big thing coming in here. I just, I want to, um, you know, be the pass first point guy that I am and, um, and help teammates, you know, generate easy looks and, and get them feeling good um, right from the get-go. Uh, and then the second question I have is, you said OKC down there, you guys got good quickly. I think is how you said it. What is it about that that franchise and the culture that has been created down there that 
created such a winning environment um, and continues to do it, you know, seem, seemingly year after year. What is it about that, and what do you feel like you can bring to Chicago from that? Yeah, I think, you know, Sam and Mark, they, um, they draft people first, and that's one of the best things, uh, you know, about the, the organization is the people from top to bottom are just unbelievable. And um, my teammates were great, coaches, front office, and everybody in between. Um, it was just a very fun place to come into work every day. And, um, and you know, having a bunch of great people together, unselfish, team-first kind of guys um, leads to winning. And obviously my first year there, we weren't great. Second year, we got a little better. And last year, we were the number one seed. So um, things evolved pretty quickly there. Um, we had a very talented group. Uh, obviously, they drafted really well, brought in great pieces. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to contribute to that. Um, but, you know, just to, from top to bottom, a class organization and um, couldn't speak more highly of them. Thanks, Josh. We'll get a couple more. Will? Hey, Josh, uh, Will Gottlieb, Leeds, CBS Sports. Um, I'm just curious if you can talk a little bit about your experience in the playoffs and just the way that ended with your role kind of diminishing a little bit. And uh, since then, have you done, like, any reflecting about some of the stuff that you can continue to grow and, and work on in your game as you transition to the Bulls? Yeah, I mean, it, it was tough because, you know, as a, as a player, you, you first you want to get to the NBA, and then when you're in the NBA, you want to be a part of big games in the playoffs. And, um, and that you know, I've dreamt of that moment for so long. And, for it to end the way it did, um, you know, kind of left a sour taste in my mouth for a long time. And, and it's tough to go into the summer as that is your last, you know, stint in the NBA uh, for that season. And, um, and it just showed me that there's so many things I have to work on to be able to um, be valuable in those moments. And, um, and, and as I said earlier, the, these are the lessons that, you know, I'd rather learn now um, as a young kid in my career, um, opposed to when I'm later in my career and it's the first time I'm experienced playoff action and I don't know what to expect. And, um, you know, it was probably a blessing in disguise for me. It really taught me what I need to work on, um, how I need to get better. And obviously shooting's a big one, um, but also the, the defensive end is something that um, I think just coming into this offseason, it, a switch just flipped in my mind. And I just realized that at, to, to be at the highest level, you've got to really compete at that end. You've got to be able to sit down, guard guys. And um, that's, that's the side of the ball that I really want to take, you know, pride in. I think the offense will come naturally, but it's that side of the ball that um, I really want to take steps forward in. Um, to make sure when playoff time comes around that, um, you know, I'm ready to go both sides of the ball and not just, you know, one. Jamal? Hey, Josh. Uh, Jamal Collier here from ESPN. Welcome to Chicago. Um, I'm curious about your conversations. You mentioned with Dylan Lee and, you know, maybe even Art Service and just some of the guys that are getting there. You, you said you seem eager to certainly fix it, get back to some of your strengths, some of the things you have been doing in the past few years. Uh, I'm curious, just like when they explain their vision for you as the point guard of this team um, and the reason they trade for you, just kind of did those visions align and what things got you excited about sort of their, you know, uh, willing to go out and acquire you and put you in a position, I guess, that's, that's, that wants to, to, to succeed. Um, yeah, no, the conversation's been great, obviously. Um, I spoke with them all when the trade first happened. I was in Australia and then. Came here on Sunday and met everybody, Billy, Arturis, uh, Mark, and, and the coaching staff. And, um, and the conversation has been great just in terms of the, the guys that they already have here, how my strengths can help the team going forward and, and things like that. But in terms of specific roles and, and what the future is going to look like, we haven't spoke a whole lot about. Um, I've kind of just wanted to adjust naturally and, and let it come as it does. Um, but yeah, as I said, everyone's been great. Um, I've spoke a lot with Billy, Arturis, Mark, and um, all the conversations from this point have been have been really exciting, and um, it gets me excited to be here and um, get into the season. Sam Smith. Sam Smith with uh, Bulls.com. I, I wanted to follow up on that briefly. Um, did Billy Donovan? Have you talked to Billy at all about the style of play um, that you think the team wants to play? Who wants the team to play? Uh, vis-a-vis, you know, you, your involvement? Uh, no, I haven't. We haven't spoke style a lot. I mean, the, the first couple of days is just getting to know each other. Um, this is the first time I met a lot of the people here um, in the organization. So style of play, roles, and all those things, we haven't really discussed much. A lot of the first few interactions have just been getting to know each other on a personal level. So, um, But this, those times will come. We'll speak a lot over the phone over the next you know, month, um, six weeks, while I'm with the national team. But um, just learning the style of play early is something I want to do. Um, understanding the offense and what they run. 
um, whether that's through watching games. I'm going to watch a lot of their games from the last couple seasons and see what they do, um, how they defend as a team, uh, the offense that they run. So um, getting an idea for that early before you know training camp, before all the guys get back here is going to be important, especially for a guy, you know, for a point guard, um, you know, you've got to learn the offense and you've got to know what's happened out on the floor. And I think if I can get a head start on that before I get back here in September, um, that's going to really help me and, and help the team. We're going to take two more. Casey? Well, I have to, so, but I'll be brief. Hey, Josh, uh, I got one off the court, one on the court. As far as off the court, obviously it's pretty well documented that you had an off the court issue last season that was uh, investigated by both Newport Beach Police and the NBA. They both closed their investigations with no further action. I know you probably can't speak about specifics from a legal perspective, but just from a personal perspective, how trying was that for you and how were you, what did you kind of take from that experience that maybe you can move forward in, in, with your career? Yeah, um, completely understand the question, and I know you've got to ask. It's part of your job, but I just I'm not going to comment on anything regarding that situation. Okay, then I'll move down the court. Um, we've talked a little bit about the Bulls um, and kind of how it pertains to you, but what's kind of your perception of the Bulls having played against them the last few seasons, um, particularly some of the the personnel on the roster that like Kobe White, Zach Levine. I mean, DeMar is future's uncertain. I mean, you can take it wherever you want. Kind yeah. of your impressions of, of the personnel on the roster. Yeah, great team. I mean, very talented team. Um, kind of, you know, top to bottom. Um, and they've they got a lot of guys that can, you know, obviously Zach DeMar, uh, Kobe was awesome, you know, really emerged last year. Uh, Pat Williams. So they've got a lot of, and then the young guys, Io, Deo, uh, Dalen, sorry. They've got a lot of talent on this team. And, um, and as I said, I'm looking forward to just coming, trying to, immerse myself in it um, and, and not take away from anybody, but just help this team continue to grow and get better. Um, but, yeah, the impressions, we only play them, obviously, twice a year um, being a Western Conference team, but um, very competitive team. And, and one of my favorite things I'm most excited about was playing in United Center in front of the fans. Every time I've been to Chicago to play here, the fans have been unbelievable. It's a packed house every time, uh, regardless of what day of the week it is. Um, so the fans, and I know they're passionate, this um this club's obviously got a lot of history, but um that's that's one of the things I'm most excited for is getting to United Center and playing in front of these uh, great fans. All right, looks like that's uh, that's all we got. Thank you guys for your time. We'll see you guys um tomorrow on draft night. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Thank guys. You Bye, guys.